Hello friends, I hope you're all doing great. So I'm here today to discuss with you an area which I believe is close to our hearts because it's something that we have to live every single day, especially if you are a working professional. The subject that we are going to talk about today is called boss management. Well, the word boss can send jitters down your spine, but uh, you can breathe easy. Because we are here to talk about how do we manage this relationship? Often the relationship between an employee and a boss is a lot more talked about, but unfortunately, not many of us really know how do we manage the relationship. So perhaps I'm here to help you with a simple step-by-step -step approach that you could adopt in your engagement with your manager. So let's get to know what it is. We call it boss management. Three simple steps to follow. Here are the steps. Step number one is expectations. Now, what do we mean by expectations? Like any manager would have expectations from his or her subordinate. Similarly, you would have expectations from your manager. So it's important that we discuss these expectations. Now, what expectations is a boss likely to have from you? Of course, the expectations would be in terms of how you need to carry yourself in the team, the kind of initiatives that you need to drive, what are some of the deliverables that you need to work on. Now, most of these are explicitly mentioned as part of our job description. However, what the job description does not tell you are the specific expectations that your boss, your manager would have from you. Because the job description is about the profile that you're going to work on. It does not talk about the expectations that your manager has specifically from you. So it's important to talk to your manager. It's important to talk to your boss and find out what are his or her expectations. Now, many a times we do not ask this question. We assume that the expectations are clearly spelled out, but they aren't. So talk to your manager, figure out. Perhaps it's a good idea. As soon as you start a fresh job, connect with your boss. Talk to your manager about it for about 15, 20 minutes and ask this question straightforward. What are your expectations from me as a subordinate, as a team member, especially if you're working as a team? Now that gives you clarity about what you're supposed to do and also what you're not supposed to do. So that's number one. Now, once you ask for expectations from your boss, from your manager, it is also an opportunity for you to discuss your expectations from the boss. Now, a lot of people are scared to talk about this. They would say, why should I talk about my expectations? Wouldn't the boss feel offended? Well, the answer is no. It's important for you to tell your boss, what are your expectations from the job that you're doing? What kind of support are you looking forward to? And perhaps it's an opportunity for you to also talk about your career aspirations. Now, these are important topics that you need to discuss with your manager. When you don't discuss them, no boss in the world would have any clue about what you expect from him or her. So talk about it openly. So step number one is to share expectations. Ask for expectations from your boss and also use this opportunity to discuss your expectations from the boss. Number two, and this is very, very straightforward and sounds like it's an obvious thing, but not many would do this regularly. It's communication. Now, what do I mean by communication? We all know how to communicate. We have been in the corporate world for quite some time. So we all know how to communicate. But communicating with your boss is a different ballgame altogether. So what do I mean by communicating with your boss? So communication could mean you need to know how frequently do you need to communicate with your boss? Now, there are some bosses who like to communicate perhaps once in a day or perhaps a couple of times in a day. Some bosses would say, do not talk to me unless you desperately need to talk to me because I'm busy. And some bosses might say, let's talk once in a week and catch up with the work that we have done. And some of them might say, only talk to me if there is something urgent. So there are different styles that bosses tend to adopt in terms of communicating. Now, the style of communication could also differ depending on the number of people that are in the office or in the team. Sometimes it could also differ because you are seated in a different geography and your boss is operating from a completely different geography. All of these have a fair grip 
on the communication that you have with your boss. So confirm that too with your boss. How do you want me to communicate with you? Would it be okay if I communicate to you at times uh, because of an urgency, I call you later in the evening? Now, when there is an urgency, we don't know whether we should call our boss or we shouldn't because we are not quite sure. So these are questions for which you need to have an answer and you deserve to have an answer. And perhaps your boss may not be able to answer all these questions right at one go, but at least it will make him or her think about it. And that's a good starting point in the relationship. So always identify the frequency of communication as well as the method of communication. So what is the method of communication that your boss prefers? Would it be directly picking up the phone and talking to him or her? Or would it be dropping an email? Or in some cases, as we all use WhatsApp as a very, very frequent form of communication, would that be something that he or she would prefer? Identify the method of communication as well. But it's very, very important that we communicate. Now, I'm not just talking about the daily communication that we do. Communication should also be looked upon from a long-term perspective. Now, we usually have communication with our manager or our boss in the form of performance appraisal, which might take place maybe once in a year or maybe sometimes twice a year. But that in itself is not sufficient. So if you can identify regular time intervals post which you have a conversation with your manager or your boss to look back at your performance and also your behavioral performance, that would give you a fair idea if you are traveling in the right direction. So identify with your manager, with your boss, what should be the frequency of short-term communication, which is on a day-to-day -day basis, and what should be the frequency of a long-term communication, which is more from the perspective of tracking performance and monitoring results. So communication is an essential piece here. Step number three, well, at the end of the day, you're working because you want to produce results. Without results, anything and everything that you do is not good enough. So it's important for you to ask your manager what results is he or she expecting from you. Now, results are slightly different than expectations because expectations talk more about the style and nature of working, whereas results are quantifiable, measurable tasks. Something which you can measure and say, I have achieved this result. So what are some of the key results based on which your performance will be evaluated? So ask this question up front. What is the result that you expect from me? Now, results could be in the form of direct work that you are responsible for. It could also be for the team performance. It could be anything. So get clarity on the results that you are supposed to deliver. This is absolutely important because many a times when we sit across during discussions in a performance appraisal meeting, we do not have the clue of what we have done and what we haven't done. So objectify your results, get clarity on that so that you have fair idea whether you have performed or you haven't performed. So let's relook at the three important areas once again. Number one is you need to discuss expectations. Ask expectations from your boss. What is it that he or she wants you to do or does not want you to do? Similarly, you also got to spell out your expectations from the engagement. What is it that you expect from your boss or manager in terms of support so that you can grow in your career, in your current job as well? Number two, communicate. There is nothing called higher or greater or more communication. Communication is part and parcel of any job that you do. So identify what should be the frequency of communication, whether it should be once a day, twice a day, once a week, once every fortnight, get to know that. At the same time, what should be the method of communication that your manager or your boss would expect? Would it be on an email? Would it be on the phone? Would it be on some other platform? Whatever it is, get clarity on that. And number three, you should know what results are you directly responsible for? What is it against which your performance will be measured and evaluated, which will directly have an impact on your annual increments and perhaps your promotions as well? So these are three fundamental things that you should always get clarity upon, irrespective of any profile that you're working on in any organization. There are job descriptions to give you direction, but it's always better that you talk to the person straightforward, clearly, so that you have immense clarity on what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to go about it. Now, will this mean that you will never have any kind of conflicts with your boss or you will never have a stretch relationship? 
not really because ultimately there are human beings involved here so emotions will come into play but it's important that you have an objective evaluation of the relationship so the more objective you are the better it is so try doing these perhaps these will give you some starter points to work with and as we progress we will look at some more points in the future as well so for now these points should keep you in good stead i wish you all the very best working with your boss thank you